Hi Internet, it's Maggie Bot here doing another weekly review. This week's game is Legacy from Portal Games. Uh, this is a one four person game that plays in about an hour. It is card based for the most part and you take your family starting with like a matriarch or a patriarch through three generations and that means marrying them off, having children, and really increasing their the titles and the contributions to society, trying to have the coolest family tree when you're done. Um, this came out just a little bit ago in the States, so about two weeks now, and I picked it up down in Dallas at Board Game Geek Con. I was pretty excited to have it. Uh, the, the designer diaries and stuff from Legacy as it was being designed and kind of finessed were really interesting, and it's really fun to kind of have that payoff afterward of being able to learn that game that you've been reading so much about. Uh, I won't go too far into it here. Let's get right into the rules, a little bit of the gameplay, and we'll stop off afterward to talk about, you know, some of the, the goods and the bads and why I liked it and why I'm going to definitely add it into my collection permanently. All right, guys, let's get into it. All right, so here we have a lot of the components that come with the game. Uh, so you have your main board with points, uh, several decks of cards, some cards that are revealed off to the side, and your friends and family kind of revealed off to the bottom. Um, you also get a handy-dandy, let's see if we can get that, player board. Um, and this is where you'll track your kind of income, your uh uh, I gotta look this up. It's like honor or prestige. It's basically your victory point income. Um, and several of the actions that you can take in a turn. And now the ones on your player board are take whatever actions you like, in whichever order, however many times. And then out on the bottom of the board, there are some very special actions that you can only take if you have certain conditions met. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up one player's worth of stuff here and show you a few rounds. Um, let's go over the different decks of cards real quick. At the beginning of every game, we are going to have each player given one player card. So this is your either your patriarch or your matriarch. Um, you will decide at the beginning of the game which side you'd like to use. They have slightly different stats. Um, this will give you your starting resources as well. So this is the number of cards you start with in hand, your friends, the number of income you start with, the beginning pot, so how much money you have, and a special action token of this color. So we will decide whether we'd like a little more starting money in which to buy things or if we'd like a little more income. Now this game income feels very good, especially in your first few games, but you'll find over time that it's not that hard to come by and you don't necessarily need it all the time. So we're going to take our matriarch here and put her at the top of our display. So cards are going to filter in below and below and below until we have three generations. So right now we just have the one. Uh, we're going to call her Lily. At the beginning of the game, every player is going to be given a secret... Um, fulfillment card for victory points at the end of the game. So this is going to make us the Cardinal de Fleury, a politician. Um, at the end of the game, there's nine victory points if you have at least eight friends in your hand. So that is notable. So by the end of the game, you really want to have built up some friends. And this section at the bottom correlates to that red deck at the end there. So if in the third generation, so the third round, you have taken one of those mission cards, sorry, uh, focus, uh, you will be able to qualify for this, which says two extra victory points for each marriage arranged with a female who gives you at least one friend in generation four. Now that's all a lot of text, and I will get to that a little later. Um, and then you also get one victory point for each couple in your family, which is a little more straightforward. So, let's get back to our game a little bit. Each player is outfitted with two of their action tokens to be used each round. Any extra action tokens are also given to that player. Uh, we will start with eight money. Eight money down below. And because of our starting capital, we will get one income to start 
and five friend cards. So we'll deal five friends off the top. Most of the time in this game, when you take a friend card, you are forced to select from the friend cards that are face up on the row. So if none of them is really appeasing whatever you're trying to do, you still need to help clear them out. Now, when you were to draw a friend card, you'll draw them whichever one you want, and the pile doesn't refill itself, um, which applies to the special rule that if there's one friend card left in the stack, you get it for free, and it doesn't qualify toward any cards that you may be drawing that round. So as soon as that fifth one is taken, then you refill from the top of the deck. So we're going to put these back here, and we'll show you what one of these cards looks like. So. Um, a friend card has um, a few different things about it. So you have a number of a dowry if it's positive or a number that it costs to marry that person in the corner. It has a job type, so this is a science type. There are workers and aristocrats. Um, this is nationality, so a flag. And down here you'll see either a number of prestige or friend cards you get to draw or it will have income so when you marry them and they're married you get to increase your stats by that number and a lot of them will have some sort of special either a rule for going forward with them or something that will happen right then so this one gives you one victory point for each other science person in your family when this person is married so it doesn't continue on after that it's just when you marry them off so we'll put that back into the stack and we got our cards in hand and the first person token in this game is this card it rotates every round and I didn't do a very good job I'll show you the round tracker it's a little weird so we're gonna move some of the cards for the babies off to the side because that stack gets kinda in the way of everyone being able to see and we'll see if we can't get a better zoom in of this board so along the top here you have your victory point track for all your players this next track is interesting. This tracks the game as it's played. So you have uh, rounds with income, rounds with income, and then each end of generation you have some upkeep to do, giving yourself victory points equal to that income and victory point for each baby you've had in that generation. And this stays pretty much the same all the way through the game. Beginning of each generation, each player will receive an extra action token, just one, and you just go through here until you get to the very end, and there's some end of the game scoring stuff. You have your stacks of cards and the action spaces to, in which to take them. Some of the actions have a cost associated, so if I undertake a mission, which is kind of a faux pas, you lose a friend card from your hand. Uh, initiating adventure is super gauche, so you lose two friend cards and a victory point. And buying a mansion is seen as kind of nouveau riche, so you lose a friend card and three money, but you get to buy a mansion. Um, hiring fertility doctors was sort of unpopular as well. You'll lose one friend and two money. So that's what the stacks at the top do, and it's all part of the worker placement in this game. So we'll go back to the wider view, and now play passes in this game from person to person to take one action at a time. So you get to place one thing. Um, you can place it onto your board of actions here and that is not rivalrous or you can take an action out here on the board and no one else for the rest of the round will be able to take that one. So as you play different generations will have different numbers of rounds but in the first generation, only two of the titles and two of the contributions will ever be taken because only two people will be able to go on those spaces. Now, I haven't played this game so many times that I can definitively say, but I don't believe there are cards that break that rule. Uh, I don't know how they work it in thematically. So let's describe each of the actions as we go. Uh, the first action being to marry into your family. So if you select the marriage action, you take a look at all the cards in your hand and this game does stress you may only marry opposite genders and what, uh, whatever they're calling it. So this lovely lady here can only marry a man. So we will take a look and weigh their costs with whatever they do when they're married. Um, Mustafa is kind of fun. He draws a card off the 
deck for each other non-French person in your family. Keep one of your choice and discard the others. But it does increase your income by two, which is a nice early game benefit. Let's say we married Mustafa. Uh, you place him in the same generation as the person you're marrying. Now they're a couple. You pay his cost, which was four. So we'll pay that five back in, grab one. And the first things that happen when you get married, you'll take any income or lose points or whatever it says on the card. So he increases our income by two. And then he would allow us to draw cards if we had other non-French in our family, but we don't, we only have one French lady, so that doesn't happen. The next thing that happens every time you marry is to draw a card off of the, the baby deck and see if the couple had their first child. So this couple now has a bouncing baby boy. He starts flipped up this way. When we get to the next generation, they will all flip over and they will be of marriageable age. Now, if you this couple had already had a child, and if this is the case, we also free up what is called arranging a marriage. So let's say for our second action, we'd like to arrange a marriage. You can take someone of the appropriate in this game gender out of your hand and arrange them to be married to one of your children. You still pay the cost. So in this case, she would actually pay us a dollar you place her upside down, and she'll be flipped with the rest of that generation. Uh, we would gain a dollar, but we don't get any of her benefits until everything flips and it is the next generation time. Uh, those effects do not go into effect during this game. So when you get into the third generation, anyone you arrange a marriage with might count toward end game scoring, but it certainly will not give you whatever their normal benefit is. Um, Another action we could have taken is to have children. Having children means drawing a card off the top of the deck and revealing it, adding it below your family. You may at this time choose to pay a victory point to draw two and keep one. That way if you see any complications you don't need to worry about them. Um, we would choose that boy and discard the other. Now, complications are a little tricky. Um, as I stated, when they come up, let's see if we can't, they come up, oh, and it says uh, complication at birth, and uh, you must choose whether or not the mother or the child survives. Beginning of the game, you'll always choose the child. It is more valuable to have them so that they can be married and have babies than it is to keep the mom, even if she nets you a couple of victory points. The end of the game during Generation 4 or so, and I feel bad saying this, you would probably lose the child. Only one of these can strike a couple. You cannot have more than one complication, and there's not that many in the deck. But once that happens, you'll put them below the couple, and for the rest of that generation, they're safe of any kind of complications. Uh, uh, next thing you can do, I'm going to pan a little bit over this way. The next thing we could choose to do is ask friends for money. Uh, this costs zero to gain two money, costs a victory point to gain three, or costs a victory point and a friend out of your hand to gain four money. Uh, friends in hand are not that desperate in this game. It doesn't feel anything near as punishing as race. You'll always have lots of friends if you need them, so discarding is not so bad. The last one on your player board is to socialize. That means going out and finding new friends. Uh, the more you pay for this, say you go to a fancy ball, the more friends you're going to get. So if you pay zero, you get one friend. One, you, pay, you get two. And two, you get three. Uh, next, we'll get into the specific actions up here at the top. I'm going to move another time. You guys are going on a wild ride. So, uh, acquiring titles uh, entails usually a number of cards or victory points or something paid. So we're going to buy a title of account. You pay four money and lose two friends because you're buying titles and that's kind of scary. Um, you gain whatever it says on here, and you apply it directly to your couple. So if we're talking about my matriarch, we put it right next to them. Each couple in this game may have one venture, one title, one contribution, and one mansion, but never more than one of any of those. But they can have up to four things attached to them. Um, each, oh, I should have mentioned this, oh no. Each family is 
limited to having three children in this game. So if you ever take an action that would give them more than three children, that action is not legal, unless their card says otherwise. Some cards will allow you to have extra children. Now, hiring the family doctor is a great, great action. So let's say I did want to use my one-time blue chip. Uh, I place it here. I lose a friend and two money. And now, one at a time, I get to draw cards off the top of the deck and add them to my family. That same couple gets two children for hiring a family doctor. Um, it looks like we got a boy and a girl. So this is fantastic. We put them below the couple. And they got twins out of one action. This is extremely efficient and wonderful. And everyone will fight over this action a lot. Um, let's see if we can't do that. Now, if we had saved up one of our regular action pawns, we could then take other actions up here. Buying a mansion just permanently increases your prestige here by two. Each round or each generation, you'll get two more victory points. It looks a little like this. Um, something of note is that the promo going around for this game are these cool mansion cards that actually have abilities. So I picked these up when I was at the con as well in anticipation of loving this game. Luckily I do. And initiating a venture just means increasing your income. So supposedly you're opening a business or doing something. Um, it increases your income by one. Missions are really neat. This red deck has a lot of them. Missions give you a little more uh, direction in which friends to marry into your families for the most part. This one, the requirements are having at least two workers in your family, like uh, people with that symbol. And it will allow you when, you, when you reach that limit, at any time you can pay one to the bank on your turn. And you will get one victory point. And you keep this card for the rest of the game, treat it as if it was a worker. So if you have other cards, you can stack them together with this. As I mentioned before, if in Generation 3 you don't take a mission card, you will not qualify for a lot of that card that you're given at the beginning of the game. Finally, we get into contributing to your community. Um, a lot of the time, these are going to be fancy ways of exchanging resources for one another. So in this one, you have a church donation. It costs you three money, but it gives you four friends off the friend stack, so it's a better ratio than using a different action. And this also will play into some of your goal cards. Um, now, at the end of each round, you're going to go and you're going to flip over all of your generations, so they go from being boys into men, or ladies they, they become of marriageable age. So anyone you had arranged a marriage with, like this one earlier, now that they're in your family, they, you get to draw your card, you get your income, you get this one. It says if you have any other Prussians, you get a green extra action pawn. We didn't have any other Prussians. Really, this is not an ideal setup, but this will show you that now... This is your active generation, and everything you do applies to this generation only. So when you marry someone or have babies, you're going to have it all out of this generation. What is past is past, and you can never go back to the old ones. This is played out until you get to the third generation, and you're arranging marriages for a fourth. After the game is over, everyone will take victory points for their special card from the beginning, adding in the red highlighted ones if they've taken a mission in the last generation, and the highest score wins. Um, this is just a very basic outline, and we'll come back and start talking about what we liked and what we didn't about the game. So overall, what I would give Theseus is a pretty solid, maybe six and a half, seven out of ten. Uh, it is, in all rights, a great card game. It plays really well at all levels. The one to four is fine. Uh, four players really limit some of what you do because you can't eat it over dinner. You can't fit everything on the table. It is. It takes over an entire table. Um, people have to be kind of organized about how they place their cards. Um, that being said, the two player is great. The cards themselves are just fine. You don't shuffle them that much, so they're not going to see much wear and tear. 
They had to be small so they didn't take up extra space. And the wooden bits, they're, there's not that many of them, but they're fine. They're great. They're just standard little wooden bits, which we like. Um, the art and the story in this game is a little beyond my capability to explain, but there is this lovely letter when you open up the box, and it, it's from the Duke, and then inside the rules there's all these little snippets that tell you a little bit about the time. And if you follow the link I'm going to put down below, there's actually a designer diary about the game, which was really great, and it helped me get interested in buying the game and wanting to know what it was all about. Um, so the two big downsides I found, um, one was the paper money. There just wasn't very much of it. It was cards, so I assume they just finished out whatever sheets they were printing. And so I would have liked to see more money in the box or just replace it with chips or something later. And then the last thing, and I'm just being nitpicky at this point, but binary gender roles and very heteronormative uh, marriages. So the girls are in pink, the boys are in sepia, and good girls and boys get married and have babies. And you're not even allowed to marry two women together just to get the benefit in the game because, I mean, okay, let's put it into the theme. Let's lose a friend out of our hands and get married to a woman. Lose two friends and get married to another woman or something. Uh, I, I know it's a touchy subject. It just still bugs me in a lot of games to not even have the option of anything else but man plus woman and baby. <sighs> That being said, it's a great game. I'm recommending it to my friends. I've found that people that don't care for it as much the first play like it a lot better the second play. And I cannot wait for the rest of the season. Theseus the Dark Orbit is coming out. And I should be able to play Nourishima Hacks 3.0 after the holiday season. I've been way too busy at work to slog through this many games. So I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, you can come over and see my website at maggiebot.com on Facebook or Twitter at MaggieBot, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!